the return to running program. So everybody should be a minimum of seven weeks postpartum um, before starting this week. Um, and if you're several week, several months or years postpartum, that's fine too. So starting this week, you're gonna you're gonna do a diastasis recti self test. So you're gonna lay on your back. Diastasis is when the six pack muscles, the rectus abdominis, that go from the rib cage down to the pubic symphysis, when they widen more than two centimeters or about two finger widths. So we're gonna check that. It is okay to do core specific exercises if you have a diastasis, but I recommend some specific guidance from your pelvic health physical therapist to really make sure that you are doing them correctly and to also do the soft tissue work that I find people need to kind of um, loosen up through the ribs and middle back, the thoracic spine, so that there's not so much pressure um, on the diastasis. So some manual therapy um, is often really helpful. So let's check. You're gonna take your two fingers and you're gonna put them up near your ribs. And then dig in and lift your head. And you're going to feel the muscle pop into your hand, and then you're gonna kind of walk your fingers down, digging in between the muscle belly. You should not have more than two centimeters width throughout, going all the way to the belly button and then all the way to the pubic bone. So that's your diastasis self check. If you're two centimeters or about two finger widths or less, then you don't have a diastasis. If you do, um, you can kind of continue to monitor it, reach out, or um, go see a pelvic health specialist. So this week, we're gonna start with working on the transversus and making things a little harder. So drawing in your pelvic floor, like holding that gas, and notice how, because that muscle is a partner with the transversus abdominis, how that muscle firms into your fingers. You should feel that firmness. Another cue that works for people is like you're putting on a tight pair of pants, gently. So gently, you feel that firmness, but the upper abdominal stay pretty soft. So you've got that firmness and you're still breathing or talking and you're gonna slide one leg down and then slide it up. Keeping that muscle activated and continuing to breathe or talk as I'm doing here at home on your own, you can count or carry on a conversation and sing. Sliding the leg and bringing it back in, nice and slow. You're gonna follow your homework sheet for the repetitions and sets for the transversus abdominis with heel slides this week. The clams are gonna get a little bit harder as well. You're gonna take the band for those of you who um, paid for the program, get those three different colored bands. And here you're gonna activate the transversus abdominis, so feel the firmness, keep the hips back and lift the top knee. The hips don't roll back, they stay stacked on each other. And then lower. And then you can relax in between each one. So drawing in, lifting the knee. So here we're kind of multitasking. You're getting some core exercise because you're activating on purpose and you're breathing and you're getting some uh, hip and glute exercise. Activating the transversus abdominis, drawing in, noticing how the muscle goes in and up and lifting the knee. So that's your clams. You're gonna slip out of the band and go onto the side for the sideline leg lifts. So leg draws back behind the hip. And then activate the transverse abdominis and lift the leg. So here that transverse stays nice and activated and there's the firmness under your finger and the leg lifts and lowers. So this week this one gets harder because you're going to just do a little bit more repetitions. Again, working the glute knee. You should feel this in your glute knee. If you feel this, if it feels easy or you feel it more in your thigh, check your alignment and see if the leg is back behind your hip. So that's the hip abduction on the side. Then rolling to the back, we're going to do the bridges, making those harder with the band. So the band, so around the knees, 
activating the transversus abdominis and then lifting the hips until they're in line with the shoulder and the knee. But notice how you're breathing the whole time, training yourself to breathe as you move because the pelvic floor works with the breathing muscle and holding the breath can lead to leaking. Throughout the program, all of the exercises should give you no pain at all. You should have no pelvic pressure, no pelvic heaviness, um, no uh, abdominal pain, and no doming or where the belly kind of uh, bulges out. Um, because you're doing that activation of the transverse abdominis, everything should drop in and up. So that's the bridges. Then you're going to come to hands and knees. And last week did the arm extension. This week we're gonna make things a little bit more challenging by drawing in and lengthening the leg to the back wall. Notice how my back, my hip doesn't tilt. My hips stay level. Feeling the length from the heel through the crown of the head and holding that just like your um, sheep directs and then lengthening the opposite heel. Again, the hip stays level. There's not a cheating up there. Um, they stay just kind of even across. Okay, and then coming into squats. This week we're gonna make those a little bit more challenging with the band. So stepping into your band so that your hips are a little bit um, wider, so your feet are a little wider than the hips, and then squatting into your imaginary chair. And as you're moving, you're breathing in and breathing out so that you're not getting into that breath holding pattern. Bring your arms forward, which is counterbalancing, and following your exercise sheet. The last exercise this week is pelvic floor exercise. Again, I'm not a huge advocate of everybody kegeling, but um, in the postpartum period, sometimes, well, very, very often, there is weakness, and so doing some intentional work to work on contracting and work on full relaxation can be really important. So squeezing the pelvic floor around all three openings, feeling the elevator go to the 10th floor, holding that for 10 seconds, and then drop. That drop should happen in about a second, and then stay relaxed. And then squeeze, feeling the squeeze in the lift. A lot of times after you have a baby, it's very hard to squeeze around the urethra, and it's very easy to squeeze around the, the anal sphincter, and there can become an imbalance. Relax. So if you notice that about your own body, you can try it on purpose, squeeze more around the urethra. So let's try that together. So squeezing more in the front compartment, more in that front triangle around these muscles, and then drop muscles. So still working on those. And using a foam roll, and if you don't have a foam roll, you can just use some firm blankets to kind of roll up. Sitting on the edge of your foam roll and relaxing back so that your head is supported and relaxing the shoulders away from each other. After being pregnant, I see a lot of just a lot of tension here, a lot of tightness, and the shoulders come forward and then even, you know. Even post-pregnancy is also like just taking care of the children, taking care of your baby. Everything is so far forward. So really trying to open here to optimize the way that your body is moving and so that you can um, heal your diastasis. This part of the body is really important to unlock and get mobility so that you don't have strain through the abdominal wall. So the arms can go low, medium, like at 90 degrees, and high, following your exercise sheet. 